Did you know that only 1% of the world's population owns 11% of the world's total wealth? That's right. This means that just one person in every hundred is a millionaire. This may appear ludicrous, but it's the truth. The world's wealthiest people share similar characteristics and live very differently from the remaining 99%. Fortunately, ladies and gentlemen, you don't need the same amount of money that they have to do what they do. In this video, I'll be showing you how to manage your money like the rich 1%. Welcome to Thrive Tastic. If you're new here, why not hit that subscribe button and join our community. And as always guys, give this video a thumbs up for that YouTube algorithm. First method, budgeting monthly expense. The 1% manages their money first by preparing a monthly budget. You might be wondering why they need a budget when they have enough money to meet their expenses. For example, how long do you think someone with a net worth of $100 billion, such as Bill Gates of Microsoft, can last if they decide to spend $1 million every day? Crazy enough, it would take him almost 100,000 days to burn up this enormous net worth if he spent a million dollars every day. However, most wealthy people do not waste their money rapidly. This example is intended to help you realize why it is crucial for you to do what the wealthy are doing if you want to be rich. If the affluent, who have plenty of money, regulate their spending by creating a monthly budget, it is illogical to believe that you should not do the same. However, the top 1% do not simply have a budget, they adhere to it. It is not enough to construct a budget, as most people do. It is more vital to stick to that budget. Having a budget allows them to control their expenditures and make necessary adjustments. With a budget, they can manage their finances and know where it is going even before they spend it. The unfortunate fact is that many people who aren't as wealthy as the 1% fail to form or keep a budget in their daily life. This frequently leads to overspending, taking on high interest debt, and enduring more financial hardship than is required. That is why, if you are watching this video right now and want to manage your finances like the 1%, you should begin planning your monthly expenditures immediately. Second method, reviewing and negotiating their top three biggest expenses. If you've been reading about managing money and achieving financial independence, you've probably come across recommendations to cut back on your spending. This is a piece of sound advice, but it is dependent on what expenditures you are reducing. For example, if you are like most people, you may be focused on expenses that have minimal impact on your budget. The three main or biggest costs you have, regardless of your current living situation, are housing, food, and transportation. These three expenses often account for more than half of your overall spending. And if you want to learn how to manage your money like the elites, you must learn to examine and control these costs. The first and generally most expensive thing is housing. If you want to cut your monthly spending, here is where you should start. Selling your present home, downsizing, renting out a room, or moving to a place with a cheaper cost of living can all help you reduce your housing expenditures. By doing these things, you can reduce or eliminate any mortgage payments you presently have, or you can offset these expenses with cash collections from tenants. Another significant cost is the cost of transportation, which we all require whether by car, bus, or bike. There's always a cost involved. To be honest, the cost of transportation may eat away at your wallet, so if you want to thrive financially, you must learn how to handle it efficiently. Some simple strategies to reduce this expenditure are to buy to your location whenever feasible, take public transit instead of driving, or sell your car. Sure, it may make your life a little more difficult in the short term, but the savings will be worth it in the long run. The cost of food is another significant expense. Clearly, you cannot live without food, but you can regulate how you eat to save money. For example, it is normally less expensive to prepare your meals at home than go to a restaurant. So honing your culinary talents might result in some significant savings over time. Furthermore, a little planning before grocery shopping can go a long way. This will not only help you get through your shopping list faster and take advantage of sales, but it will also help you stay within your budget. Before we go to the next method, I would like to ask you guys, 
Are your top three biggest expenses the same as mentioned in this video? Housing, food, and transportation? Would it be possible for you to cut down these expenses and be ready to imitate the life of the 1% rich? Please let us know your answers in the comment section below. Third method, paying off consumer debt as soon as possible. Debt is one of the fastest way to make you financially crippled. If you've ever had to repay a debt, you'll understand this. Being in debt necessitates the use of funds that could have been saved or invested instead of repaying creditors, which nearly always comes with additional cost in the form of interest. Let us not forget that not every debt has the same impact on your finances. Consumer debt is one of those obligations that you should do all in your power to pay off as soon as possible. Consumer debts are personal debts that are incurred as a result of purchasing goods used for individual or household consumption. In short, these are debts that are not utilized for investments or for business operations. Credit card debt, school loans, vehicle loans, mortgages, and payday loans are just a few examples of consumer debts. The first reason why you should pay off this kind of debt as soon as possible is that most consumer debts have high interest rates. This means the longer you wait to pay them all off, the more money you will have to spend on interest. Contrary to what you might believe, the 1% rich still incur debts. They view debt as a tool and utilize it to achieve financial leverage. However, when it comes to consumer debt, they pay it as soon as possible. The first technique used by the rich 1% is to avoid incurring consumer debt in the first place. This is the most reasonable strategy since you wouldn't have to worry about repaying anything if you didn't have any debt. Those who are well off may do this by spending less than they make and living within their means. If they do have debt, the first thing they do is construct a debt repayment plan in which they calculate how much debt they have and plan how they will pay it back. They usually pay first the one with the highest interest rate, pay at least the minimum required payment for their monthly credit card bills, and pay it more when they can. By doing this, they eliminate incurring extra costs for penalties and more interest. Before we go on to the next method, I'd like to know, what kind of consumer debt are you guys more prone of? Are you paying them off as quickly as possible? What are the challenges that hinder you from paying quickly? Please let us know your answers in the comment section below. Fourth method, planning tax payments. Another factor that distinguishes the 1% from the rest of the population is how they organize their finances, especially tax payments. Those who earn more money are supposed to pay more tax, and you may believe that the top 1% pay the most tax, but this is not totally correct. They plan their tax payments and look into numerous ways to pay less tax by taking advantage of the law's provisions. This allows them to cut their tax juice. Warren Buffett, one of the world's richest individuals, once stated that he paid lower taxes than his secretary because of how he earned his income. This shows how the 1% rich effectively manages their finances more than the remaining population. They hire the greatest financial advisors who utilize their skills to handle their finances for them, allowing them to save a significant amount of money in taxes. They generate the majority of their income from investments and other ways, allowing them to pay lower tax dues than individuals who earn their income through employment. Another method they plan their tax payments is by separating their personal funds from their business-related funds. The majority of the 1% rich are entrepreneurs or business owners and they earn their income through their business or by owning stock in a certain company. This is yet another reason why they may be able to cut the amount they pay in taxes by a percentage. Fifth method, leveraging credit card reward. When it comes to credit cards, there is a heated argument about whether or not you should use them. The majority of people end up in debt as a result of their irresponsible credit card usage. There are several challenges that people who use credit card may face. High upfront cost, high interest rates, the habit of overspending it may bring. However, credit cards have some advantages. The 1% have figured out how to use them. They are more meticulous when it comes to their finances. 
That's why taking advantage of the rewards that these credit cards offer is something they would truly enjoy. The first thing you must realize is that credit cards are not bad. They may even serve as your safety net if you run out of cash. However, you should only use them if you have the capacity to cover the costs that you might incur. When you learn to use a credit card responsibly, the benefits that you get will be substantial. Many credit card companies offer rewards to their customer to encourage them to use their card often. These rewards are commonly in the forms of cashback, mileage, and points. And because the 1% rich maintains a great credit history, they usually qualify for these privileges. When you use your card responsibly, you should then expect some rewards from them. Cashback is the simplest type of credit card reward. It usually happens when the credit card company rewards you a certain percentage of your total charges, which they would credit back to your card. These would offset or lessen your total credit card bill. Mileage, on the other hand, gives you discounted airline tickets or free flights, seat upgrades, priority boarding, and other bonuses depending on your miles. You earn miles by using your credit card on your travels or using it to book tickets for others. Lastly, the point system. Here, credit card providers reward you with bonus points when you satisfy specific conditions, which are generally connected to spending levels. These points can later be converted to cash or used for purchases. Ultimately, the rich use credit cards to gain financial rewards and you can too if you use them appropriately. Sixth method, taking advantage of the low interest debt tool. The 1% view debt as a tool to be taken advantage of. They normally opt for debts with low interest rates that they can pay off quickly and they don't take out loans to acquire consumable items. Instead, they take out loans to invest in their business in order to build long-lasting wealth. By taking out a loan, they will have more resources and financial flexibility in acquiring income-earning items than using only their own money. In other words, they take a loan to build assets and not to increase their liabilities. They also avoid credit card debts as much as possible. If you want to manage your finances like the 1%, you must learn to differentiate between good and bad debts. Good debts are obligations that help you acquire more assets that could accumulate wealth over time. Bad debts, on the other hand, are the ones that only increase your liabilities without you earning anything in return. Seventh method, investing excess cash into self-development. Self-development is one of the most important investments that the top 1% makes. It doesn't matter how much they spend on it because they realize that the benefits outweigh the cost. They attend seminars and workshops and won't let the day pass without reading. They are always curious and very passionate about learning new things. They develop all aspects of their lives, including spirituality, finances, business, health, and relationships. Every time they can't read, they listen to audiobooks or podcasts in their cars. If you want to be like the 1% rich, you must be prepared to do what they are doing. And now you know what exactly it is that you must do. Thank you for watching this Thrive-tastic video. So if you found it valuable, consider subscribing to our channel and joining our awesome community. And if you're still hungry for more, we handpicked this awesome Thrive-tastic video for you to watch next. 5 Rules to Be Successful and Build Unbreakable Self-Discipline